So the idea of virulence and its evolution uh, has had a somewhat tortured history. Um, it has gone from a perspective that was not very evolutionary, even though it uh, tried to sound evolutionary, to, to one that uh, is very much adaptive, uh, trying to understand things from an evolutionary ecological perspective, that is in terms of fitness, and particularly the fitness that uh, is of concern is the fitness of the parasite. So the evolution of virulence, although virulence is something that impacts the host organism, uh, it's something that, that we study from the perspective especially of the parasite itself. It's the evolution of the parasite in terms of its virulence. Although, as we'll see, the parasite's ability to affect the host in terms of, its, in terms of the host's health uh, can have an impact on the parasite's fitness also. So for most of the 20th century, the prevailing dogma was that disease organisms eventually should evolve towards benign coexistence with their hosts. That is, harmful diseases were interpreted as a transitory state of maladaptation. That's maladaptation on the part of the, uh, of the parasite. This view arose more from assumptions about the har harmony of nature uh, rather than from rigorous application of evolutionary principles. Specifically, it failed to cast the problem in the context of natural selection. Rather than asking whether harmful or mild variants of parasites, again, would win out in competition with each other over the short run, the focus was on what was stable over the long run. Natural selection, however, is powerless to favor long-term stability if the variants that win in the short term destabilize the system. Natural selection may favor the evolution of extreme harmfulness if the host exploitation that causes this harm enhances the competitive success of the harmful variants over benign variants in the short run. If predator-like variants of a pathogen population outproduce and outtransmit benign variants, then benign coexistence between predator and host may be precluded. So we really don't know what level of virulence is going to give rise to an optimal fitness for the pathogen, nor whether the pathogen is going to be able to uh, uh, realize that level of virulence. Um, but we do have some sense of where that level of virulence should lie, and it really is a function of the degree to which a level of virulence is either a help or a hindrance to what's known as parasite transmission uh, in combination with whether or not the parasite population infecting a single host uh, can take advantage of kin selection and inclusive fitness in order to restrain the level of virulence that the population of, uh, that the parasite population as a whole displays around whatever the optimal virulence is, the optimal level of harm to the host that coincides with the maximal parasite fitness. So this is a cartoon that I actually generated, I believe, in 1995. This would be the, the first term that I ever taught. And I was teaching uh, microbiology, just micro, uh, at that time it was micro 509, introductory microbiology for nurses. And uh, I wanted to bring into it something that uh, I was very excited about at the time, was uh, trying to understand the virulence of pathogens, uh, particularly uh, in the context of the evolution of virulence in bacteriophages. Uh, which is um, it ultimately turned into the figure that I've been showing over and over again about the uh, competition between expedient and economical bacteriophages. But at any rate, I put together this figure to give uh, students a, a sense of how virulence can vary and how the level of virulence that a uh, pathogen imposes upon its host, the degree of sickness that uh, the pathogen uh, makes the host, um, can have an impact on the fitness of the pathogen. And that impact is particularly in terms of the ability of the pathogen to uh, be transmitted. So what we have here is, uh, is me uh, sick in bed because I have some kind of uh, pathogen that's infecting me and making me really sick to the point where I'm not going to work. And here alternatively is me uh, sufficiently healthy uh, that I can still go to work but I'm still sick and therefore I'm still uh, coughing for example and uh, able to transmit whatever is infecting me to others. So. For some pathogens, more virulence means less contact with new hosts. These would be the new hosts uh, to which progeny may be transmitted. 
Uh, and and what, what that means is that uh, this individual here, me, sick in bed, although I may be producing more pathogens and I may be uh, transmitting more pathogens out into uh, the environment that surrounds me, uh, there's no one there to, uh, for those pathogens to land on to make sick. Uh, in the instance where I'm coming to work, I'm less sick, I uh, potentially am producing fewer pathogens and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sending fewer of those pathogens off into the environment that surrounds me, but uh, there are more individuals there. In fact, there are individuals there uh, that could potentially become infected by, um, as a consequence of uh, my coughing on them. So the potential for transmission is greater here, even though the amount of pathogen that may be leaving my body at any given time could be smaller. So to su succeed evolutionarily, a parasite has to be transmitted before its host either dies or eliminates it. So a, a parasite is, is living in an environment that represents a dead end for it. It's not going to be able to persist in that environment forever. And as a consequence, uh, it has to somehow balance out uh, its need um, to replicate within that environment uh, with the fact that ultimately it's got to get out of that environment in order for the parasite uh, to uh, persist over the long term. Greater transmission ability and therefore greater pathogen success, greater parasite fitness, uh, may come as a consequence of reduced virulence that is making the host less sick if that reduced virulence can coincide with greater opportunities, a greater potential for the parasite to be transmitted to new hosts. Uh, and again, getting back to the idea of restraint, showing a lower amount of virulence, making your host less sick, uh, may require the population of parasites in that infecting a single host uh, to not get out of hand in terms of their replication or otherwise in terms of their making the host sick if they want to retain some optimal level of virulence within that host uh, so that their likelihood of transmission uh, is maintained at a high level.